Three years before I officially started dying, I started running. Thanks to a lie. Or let's call it a sweeping generalization that turned out to be flat wrong. Don't worry, my new husband David said when I moved from Atlanta to Washington, D.C. to begin our married life. It never snows in D.C. We were hit by three blizzards in six weeks. The first blizzard transformed my new city into a brilliant white palace when the sun came out. During the second blizzard, we made vast quantities of chili and played bad pool in our apartment building's rec room. By the third blizzard, I was tired of snow, tired of chili, and tired of being cooped up in our little apartment. I needed to move. I threw on a t-shirt, shorts, and a pair of sneakers and announced to David that I was going for a run on the treadmill downstairs. Do you know where it is? Uh, Fair question. I'll find it, I said, and skipped out the door. Fifteen minutes later, sweating and gasping for air, I hit the button to decrease the speed to a jog, then a walk. Even with my heart pounding and breathing heavy, I felt awake and alive in a way I hadn't felt since I was a kid. I could do this every single day. I had never been an athlete. I had been a coxswain for the crew rowing team in college. My job was to steer the boat, lead workout drills, and yell at the four men as they rowed. Back then, I was so small and thin that we had to carry a sack of sand in the boat during races so our team didn't have an unfair advantage. One, two, three. I was a tiny, unathletic dictator shouting orders to the real athletes. One, two, three. I loved being in charge, but also not in charge whatsoever. 